What's going on, gentlemen? Welcome to Essential Style. Today, we are taking a first look and discussing the Red Wing Iron Ranger 8111 and Amber Harness. These are the Red Wing Iron Ranger, colors Amber Harness, style number 8111, year 2020. Got the Vibram Mini Lug outsole. Really good, really beautiful, really nice boot. A couple of years ago, it had to be at least three or four years ago, I remember I wanted to get into boots. I was really heavy into shoes, wearing those zero grands a lot. And I Googled, I said, you know, a cap toe boot would, would be, look pretty good, right? So that was just me. I, I like cap toes, I like wing tips. So I just Googled cap toe boot. This one came up and immediately I said, that was a great looking boot. It's rugged, it's masculine, it's manly. It looks like it can take a beating. What more could you want in a heritage boot, right? Or in a, in a boot that you're gonna wear for, let's be honest, style and fashion choices, right? This came up, but at that time they were doing the nitrile cork outsole, which some people said it was good, some people said it was bad, but obviously the mini lug is a bit better, especially if you want to walk around and the ground is wet or there's a little bit of snow on the ground. So I ended up getting the Red Wing 8119s, which were the burgundy ones, uh, were, I'm, sure they pretty, I'm pretty sure they still make them, but those are the first models that came with the mini lugs. And I got those and everyone on Red Wing was saying, you got to size down. Got to size down a size and a half, right? So I went to a Red Wing store locally. They told me to get as tight as I could. Um, my feet were killing me for about a, a good month or so. They ended up breaking in pretty nicely, but it was still super tight around my toes. I ended up just selling them on eBay. I took a loss on them. I said, you know what? Not a big deal. I, I, I liked them, but I wasn't really totally 100% on them. And they, they were bothering my toes. So I said, better to just... You only get one pair of feet, guys. So that was my first experience. I wasn't too happy about that. A couple of years went by, and then I said, you know, I want something that's really versatile. I was wearing my, my Clark's Desert Boots a lot. I saw the Red Wing Work Chukka. Um, as you know, I got that one. I didn't size down too much because of the first one, the first mistake I made with the first pair of Iron Rangers. And I really enjoyed those, but you could tell from the video that I have up that after a while, they, they loosened up and then my foot was just sliding around in them. And I think it has something to do with chukka boots only have three eyelets, not four, five, six, was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can't really get as good of a fit. And maybe initially when the boot's nice and tight around you, around your foot, it could be okay. But as it loosens up, it'd be, it's going to be a sloppy fit. And so that was my experience. So I've since parted with those. So I finally took the plunge on these. These are a size 11. They fit me nice and snug around here, but there's plenty of room in the toe. I've been wearing them quite a bit just around the house. Breaking process is still very real with Red Wing boots. Super excited, super happy with them. So I just wanted to go over them. First look. I'm sure a lot of guys that are into style, probably you know all about the Iron Ranger. You probably know more about it than I do. But for those that don't, it is a American made, made in Red Wing, Minnesota, heritage work boot, which basically means it's not a true work boot. There's no sort of waterproofing. There's no toe protection in it. I mean, there is some extra leather in here. Obviously, obviously will protect your toe more than if you're wearing a pair of tennis sneakers or walking barefoot around the house. But that's what it is. Nice Vibram mini lug design. Uh, nice heel right there. This is a good year welted shoe, which means that as this wears away, you can have them replace it. Um, nail seated heels as the heel wears away they can just take that heel off and put it back on this is not the type of shoe that you buy in an apartment store you wear it for a year and then you get rid of it and you buy it again this is the type of shoe that you buy it you wear it for a little while it breaks in you wear it a lot and then once it's all worn out you take it back to red wing and then they take care of it they resole it of course that's a, as a cost but it's a shoe that's going to be with you for quite a long time so again the shoe is just really rugged feels really solid um, at $330, this is not a cheap boot, but it, it feels super solid. You've got quadruple stitching here on the toe cap. you got a bunch of triple stitching here, triple stitching here. They're not playing any games with this boot. This is a high quality boot. Like I said, that Goodyear welt, it ends right here and it starts up over here. A lot of Goodyear welts go all the way around. They call it a 360 degree Goodyear welt. This is a 270 degree Goodyear welt. I think they're skimping on water resistance a little bit, but not something that I'm really concerned about. I think the 270 just makes the back of the shoe a bit slimmer. They've got this nice triple stitching comes up over here and then goes over here. And I got to say, I think they're doing that. There's a couple of extra layers of leather right here to give it some left, right stability. I don't want to be jinxing myself, knock on wood, but feels like it's going to be pretty hard to roll an ankle in these boots, which is good. I, mean, I think that's why a lot of people end up liking boots. They just much more secure around your foot. Feel like you're much more locked in. And 
on the inside. Let's take the laces out and go over the inside for a bit. So you do have a gusseted tongue right here. So theoretically, if you stepped in a puddle up to here, you'd be covered. This boot's not waterproof, like we were saying. It is water resistant, so if you stepped in a puddle for a few seconds, I'm sure you'd be fine. But you don't want to go standing in it for you know, more than a few minutes. I'm sure water would eventually seep through the leather. Inside, a very old school technology. This is a very hard leather insole. If you're going to be buying one of these boots, you got to make sure you're okay with that hard leather insole. Another option you could do is you can size up and you can get a aftermarket insole. Red Wing sells them as well. But in my experience, I prefer the feel of a leather insole that it just kind of breaks in, forms to your foot. Super comfortable. I think I've mentioned that before in some of my other shoe reviews or some of my other discussions. I would trade a bit of discomfort at first for comfort down the line, basically looking into the future and who's going to be super comfortable. That's the overview of the shoe. That's kind of why I bought it. I'm pretty psyched about it. Let's talk about how I've been wearing it, what I've been doing to break it in. So lacing them up is pretty self-explanatory. I've got my mid-weight wool socks on right now. Just use the speed laces. So I wanted to go over how they fit for a little bit. I am a size 12, true to size. My right foot's about 11 and 3 quarters, 11 and a half to 11 to 12. My left foot is a little bit longer. It's a more of a 12 on that Brannock device. My feet are about general, generally normal width. These are a size 11. In running shoes, I'm a size 13. In Vans, old schools, and Converse, any type of canvas sneaker, I'm a size 12. Clark's has a boot size 11. Dress shoes, size 11 and a half. So between 11 and a half to 12, these are sized down about one full size. The way that they fit is they're snug around the midfoot when I have them all tied up like this, but I have a lot of room in my toe area. I could actually move my foot. I can move the front of my foot like that. And in my experience, that's what you want in a pair of boots like these. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is it's gonna stretch out here. The boot stretches out here. And then my foot just kind of pushes itself to the side. And then it just feels like it's crushing my little toes. Don't like that. That's what I experienced with my Burgundy Iron Rangers in a size 10 and a half. These are a half a size above those. I think size 11 is perfect. And they feel nice and snug without being too tight. Just around that midsection, just around here. Plenty of room in the toe. And this is generally how I would wear them. I really like this 8111 style. I really like it. It's called Amber Harness. Kind of like a golden mid-brown. I feel like it matches most of my wardrobe really well. It matches jeans and khakis, which is typically all that I wear. As far as breaking in, I've just been walking around the house doing household chores, taking the dog for a walk. They still are a bit stiff if I go like that, especially on the left foot. If I was to go like this, right here, right at this part of the bend, it kind of hurts. It's going, it's digging right into the top of my toes, the upper part where the ball of your foot is. I was going to do some push-ups and go like that. It hurts. This part, it hurts right here. Um, the right one's not that bad right now, but more it's the left one. So it's going to take some time to break these in. Doing stairs too. When you do stairs, this part right here, well, if I was to go like that, it's getting better. But as you start right here, right where you tie the laces, that was really stiff. It is getting, it's starting to get nice and loose. I'm able to roll my ankle like that. They're breaking in nicely. Bottom of the foot still feels hard as a, Hard as a two by four. And, but overall, I've had these for about a week right now and they're kind of doing pretty well. I'm liking them. I, I feel like they're gonna, once I hit the one month, two month, they're gonna be perfect. So overall, for the first week, they're breaking in nicely. I still wouldn't wear them for an entire day, but just wearing them around the house, taking the dog around the block for a walk, taking out garbage, working from home where you're able to sit down here and there. They are fitting nicely, running a couple errands here and there. I wouldn't wear them for an eight hour work day if I had to be on my feet for eight hours straight. I wouldn't wear them to New York City or if you're gonna go on a hike yet. Not just yet. They're getting there, but not just yet. I think about after the one month to two month, that's when they're gonna feel awesome. So just keep that in mind. If you guys are gonna shop for Heritage Boots, specifically the Iron Rangers, you don't wanna get them and then just walk all over. Don't get them and go on vacation like the next day. You definitely wanna take time to wear in. Otherwise, your feet are just going to be killing you. That being said, if they are hurting you like crazy and it's super painful to wear, in my opinion, my experience, that means they're too tight. 
Go a size bigger, start with a half a size, go half a size larger. They should not be too tight to the point where it feels like your toes and your foot is just getting totally crushed. It should feel stiff around here. It should feel stiff around here. You shouldn't be able to go like that. It'll get stiff. You shouldn't be able to do stairs without get, getting stiff right here. Other than that, if, it's, if it feels like it's crushing, my opinion, it's too tight. If it feels like your foot's just it's way too loose, too big. You guys know your size. Go to the store, trying to half a size up, trying to half a size down, trying to full size down. But in my experience, the way these should fit, snug around the midfoot, lots of toe room, snug around here. That way it's not, you get that nice locked in solid feeling without the boot feeling it gets just too tight around your foot. So guys, thank you so much for checking out my first look and some of my opinions and my advice on the Red Wing Iron Ranger, how to size it, how to, how to break it in. Um, obviously, like I said, I just got these shoes, so after wearing them for a few weeks, I'll report back and let you guys know how the break-in process have gone and how I still feel about these boots. This color, 8111, I think is great. Between the 8111s and the 8085, the Copper Rough and Tough. The Copper Rough and Tough, I think, is another awesome option. I was going to get that one, but I think this one just takes the cake as far as versatility. It's going to look a little bit better and a little bit dressier with the khakis, which is kind of the extent to where I wear these with. I will be wearing these. I'll report back. I'll let you guys know how the breaking goes, how my, what my opinion is of it, and how they age. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. If I helped you, let me know. Consider subscribing. And as always, thank you so much for watching.